Oh. Hi, how's it going? Another week in. This week's an interesting one, I think, because uh, I've had some comeuppances in terms of what's come in. I was really expecting my John Wick Steel book to come in today, but I guess that'll come in next week. I mean, as in for next week's video. It'll probably come in tomorrow. It's just annoying, because, like, Mum was home all day today. It would have been really easy. Like, it's the parents are leaving tonight, so it would just have been really, really easy. Anyway, what? what let's, just, let's just dive into what I got, obviously. There's a good selection of films here, and a TV show as well. Um, not too much, I might add a second clip with John Wick. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, of course. Uh, this one I actually, I haven't watched it since I was a child. This is one of those, like, I loved this as a kid. I loved Power Rangers. It's one of those, I, I don't even, I had figurines. I think I'd watched some of the TV show, but most of the time it's, the movie that I watched, so I was never huge into the lore or anything. I just liked it because, you know, people were doing kind of karate stuff with monsters. It's always fun. This is quite an interesting Blu-ray release because it's a Shout Factory release. Um, my, my, if you know how to fix this, let me know. But I do have a gripe with this. Uh, I don't know if you can tell. I'll see if I can actually look at it. You see how there's a lot of, like, dirt and, and residue on the spine? Because like when they wrap it, they like shrink wrap it around from the spine onwards. I really hate that because I don't know how to get rid of it. It sticks to the spine. How do I get rid of that? It's probably like acetone or something. Either way, you get disc artwork, which is nice. It is a region A disc. Uh, it does come with inside artwork, which is really cool. Um, it's basically like, here are all of the characters. So you get like your main characters on the top and your villains on the base, of course. So... It's actually a really nice alternate artwork. I wouldn't really put that as the thing to display because it doesn't like have a spine or anything, but it's just kind of cool, especially if you're like, I don't know, like you're a Power Rangers fan, but you're, I don't know, forget who the characters are called, even though you know, realistically you can just watch it and be like, ah, oh, yeah, it's that guy, it's Ivan Ooze. But at the same time, I got this because I think it was Cosmonaut Variety Hour had done a video where they, he and his mate watched this film and for once in my life, I got nostalgia. Like, I actually felt it. I'm like, oh my God. Like, I'm like, I was having the, all the stages of, oh my God, I remember this. Oh, this was so much fun. Man, this stuff's great. And you know, you're watching, I'm watching two people who are also enjoying it, one who's experiencing it for the very first time. So I figured I gotta go out and get the Blu-ray. So I ordered the Blu-ray on Amazon, again, from the US. But it does come with uh, bonus features, a look back at Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie, including new interviews with director Brian Spicer and stars Johnny Young Bosch and Paul Freeman and more, plus an original feature in the theatrical trailer. So not a lot, but the look back would probably be decently interesting as a kind of thing. It does have a pretty, stand, pretty good hefty amount of details on the back there in terms of all the stuff about the whole entire movie and whatnot but uh yeah so there's not too much else to mention here i think this is probably owned by disney now but you still get some you know it's in 1080p you get 511 master audio i've heard that the blu-ray actually looks quite nice so i looked up some reviews which i was interested i think most people were like surprised that it being power rangers that it was actually going to get a good blu-ray release so i'm pretty happy with that i'm yet to rewatch it but i'll probably do that I don't know, today or tomorrow or sometime soon, I hope, because I, hell, I like the Power Rangers and they're cool. Hey, hey, Power Rangers. The next one I got was luckily only $15 and still, like, I think it was mint in its plastic still. Yes, it was. Um, I got Picnic at Hanging Rock, the Australian TV show, the miniseries. Uh, I mostly got this for one reason. Uh, it does come with special features as well, I should note. Um, so, yeah. I haven't actually finished watching this. I watched like the first two episodes and then never watched anything after. I've skimmed through parts on Binge because it was on there because I wanted to see what part of this show I was in. Because I was in the show. Uh, it's got pink discs. I don't dislike the show. I just don't care as much for it as I do for the movie. I much prefer the movie's version. But I would like to rewatch it for the element of because I, I can. I'll probably watch it in a month or so when like everyone's back home or whatever. But 
I did look through on Binge to find the clips to see if I was actually on screen, and I'm pretty sure I am, I just don't look anything like I do now. Mostly for the fact that they've shaved me down like completely clean shaven, I've got no glasses on, I'm like six years younger, so trust me, you can tell. Um, I did get some screen caps, uh, and it looks like me, and to be honest, we all had different costumings, basically all the same to the point of we had pants and we had no shirts and top hats. The idea is it's a nighttime scene as the the basically main male character who's possibly gay. It's pretty obvious, like that's why he was kicked out of England, <laughs> banished to Australia because he's the gay. And so I was there, filmed that scene. The guy was there. I didn't even know who the hell he was <laughs> until I watched the show. I'm like, oh, I know, I met that guy, you know. And yeah, I looked at the scene again and I basically broke it down frame by frame and it was like, okay, I can basically tell where I am despite the fact that no one agrees with me, even in my household, that that even looks like me, which is fair. I know it is because I can see elements of myself that makes, that looks like me, but also I was fucking there. I just don't have any photos of myself dressed up because you kind of could, weren't allowed to do that. But uh, yeah, we all had different slight variations in costuming. Like we had one guy who had a tie coming off his top hat. There was one guy who was just playing shirtless as well as the main guy and they were like the romantic interests, you know? So that was the obvious thing. They're shown completely on screen like, like I am now, like complete mid shot and everything. Um, as well as the main guy, you see him throughout the whole show, but you don't see the other guy. There was a guy who was in the shot that I, I'm in, who's next to me, who has overalls on. He was also couldn't see. Both of us wore glasses and we had to take them off for the shoot because of course period accuracy. We don't have period accurate glasses. So they had to remove our glasses. And so I couldn't see for most of the filming, which is funny. I mean, it was all a blur, but I could still see enough, you know? Um, and yeah, so there's a couple shots, a blurred shot as well as a silhouetted shot where, cause I'm wearing a tie and actually just wearing a tie. There's a guy who has a scarf on. There's a guy who has like a vest on. Uh, so there's like stuff like that. I know that I wore the tie just around my neck. So yeah, it's interesting. I'm pretty sure it's me. I'm like 95% sure it's me, you know, but uh, yeah, it's just kind of cool. And I figured, you know, I'm in the show to some degree. I might as well buy the Blu-ray and so I got it off an eBay reseller. So for a pretty good price, again, 16 bucks. So I was happy with that. It's just kind of fun, you know, like it was the only extra gig. I, I didn't have any lines. I was just an extra. Like I didn't, I, it's the only time of being on in a narrative TV show. And that's just because I had a very small period of my life where I was an extra on TV shows. And that was it. That was the only gig I got, which kind of sucks, but I've met an actor, a couple actors since. And one of them even said like, yeah, it kind of sucks to be both an extra and an actor because especially if you change yourself a lot, like this is a person who well, they're trans. They literally transitioned. So it's like their agency wasn't very happy about the fact that they had literally changed on the outside a lot. So it's like, like not in a uh, transphobic way in a, ah, oh, shit, now we've got to take photos again, do all the stuff. And they just were like, nah, don't worry, but I will just won't act anymore. So the, they don't do they, they don't, they don't acting anymore, which is fine. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I, it's, it's just nice. It's nice to have the show. <sighs> physical media, supporting Australian and stuff, I guess. I don't know, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's just, it's just a fun thing. Even my parents were like surprised I didn't have it already, which is fair enough. I was going to buy it a long time ago, but it was like 40 bucks at JB. And I'm like, I don't want to spend 40 bucks on the show. I didn't like it that much. I'm like we got two episodes in, saw my scene, it was cut to hell. And I'm like, I'm not watching the rest of this shit. I, it was already boring enough as it was. You know, sometimes you don't need to stretch something out for a six episode mini series, but hey, making the money better than a remake of a movie I guess makes more sense to some logical degree so yeah that's about it for that um I don't know it's just just fun but uh, I will not be showing any shots from the show mostly for copyright reasons but also you're gonna have to look for me if you'd see it you won't know it's me don't worry (laughs) I know it's me I recognize my ears and my my eyes you know and again this is this is me without glasses I look different enough so not to mention the fact that I was wearing a hat completely clean shaven let's move on oh look at that it's the one where he says the (laughs) n-word so yes um if you saw my video a few weeks back the uh 
necessity of physical media. I mentioned that I had ordered this version of the French Connection as, as well as the signature release, which comes with no DNR, different color grading as well. I got both versions. I mostly wanted to get this for the second film because there was no other real easy way to get the second film. But this is actually comes with, of all things, three discs, which some of you might know. The main reason being is that the first film is split onto two discs, the film on one disc, the special features on the second disc. Uh, it emphasizes here special features commentary with director John Frankenheimer, commentary with Gene Hackman and producer Robert Rosen, isolated score soundtrack, a conversation with Gene Hackman, Frankenheimer in focus, theatrical trailer stills, that's for the second film, my bad. Um, first film has introduction to the French Connection, audio commentary with William Friedkin, um, audio commentary with Gene Hackman, trivia track, deleted scenes and much more, that's kind of annoying. Okay, it doesn't actually emphasize what the special features are, but... Uh, there is a website that compared it, and basically the two releases were the exact same in terms of special features, in terms of this and the, the signature release, except this has two features more, one being about the new color grading, you know, the new transfer, um, which obviously isn't in the new, the other release, because the other release doesn't have the same transfer, it has a different transfer that was overseen by the director and the cinematographer, not just the director, and the second special feature is like a standard definition 40 odd minute, 50 minute, like documentary making of, so um, yeah, but also comes with the second film, so it just made it easier for me to get it like this, and it was like 20 odd dollars from Amazon, it was shockingly cheap, and the fact that they're still available is very interesting, except for the fact that I guess you got to contrast that to how the signature edition has gone a bit more out of print, especially on Amazon but I could get the British region version for a lot cheaper. I think it's just in the US. I think because they were going on about how you couldn't get the American version anymore from Amazon. And it's like, I was looking up, I'm like, I can find this two pack on Amazon and it's still there for 20, like 22, $23. It's a UK import. And that's probably why they don't buy it from there because they're all region A. Oh. And so, of course, they want to get the signature release, which you can't get on Amazon in, the US, in Australia, but I could from eBay. And the fact that it's still available on eBay from, like, a website, it's like, it's not, like, Kish Cash, but it's one of those stores, you know, that's, like, a website that's, like, international. So, oh boy, that's still yet to come in. But uh, when I when it does come in, I'll rewatch that version because I've only seen the DVD, and then I'll watch the second film, which I've never seen before. So that'll be fun. Talking about a film I'd never seen before until uh, a couple of days ago, I got Shiver Baby. Shiver as in like, it's a Jewish uh, wake, so it's, it's pronounced like Shiver, like you're cold. I learned that for this movie. <laughs> this is the movie release, comes with the sleeve, which is nice. The sleeve isn't in immaculate condition, as you can see on the top there, there is some white particles. But uh, I love the artwork, it's the exact same design on the disc as well but uh, it does tell you you know about the film then you get your specs your barcode and all that stuff i've looked at the special feature as well which was the q a with writer director emma seligman 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 because i watched the film the other night i i got it i got it in and i watched it like immediately because i was like you know i think it was a wednesday night actually because i was think i was expecting dad to go umpiring but knowing that the weather oh maybe it was thursday night i think it was thursday night i have a way i knew dad would get home at like five o'clock and i was like i have an hour and a half to kill just less than and luckily this movie is 77 minutes long yeah it's really short and it's really good um you got some inside artwork which obviously advertises movie as a streaming service and it has a bagel for your disc artwork which is fun a lot of bagels and movies of recent like a lot. You got Spider Man, you got everything everywhere, you got this. I gotta admit, I think this is one of my favorite examples of a bagel, but let's be honest, they're all really unique and fun. So, yeah, it's interesting that this still emphasizes the, uh, you know, streaming service. But, um, you know, it's not a bad release. It actually looked really good. Uh, the Q&A was really interesting. It sucks that there's no other special features and that you can actually see the half an hour interview of the Q&A like on YouTube. 
I think it's courtesy of the movie channel. I think they've just got it there because it's like, well, it's their license. They can release it on YouTube and on the Blu-ray release. So if you just watch it on... I imagine if you watch it on a movie, which I don't think it's actually available on movie anymore. I don't know. But because their whole thing is a new movie, new movie every day. So yeah, but they've got physical media releases as well. So it's like, I imagine if they like the Criterion channel, if they did have it on movie, they would probably have the... Q&A there on Ruby as well, much like the Criterion channel has. So, yeah, uh, an interesting release. I don't think there was any, I can't think of any other Blu-ray releases that had come out for this film, but I figured I would test out the movie releases because I've been seeing them pop up over the past couple of years, and I'm like, I want to see what their catalogue is like. So I bought another film. This one I haven't yet watched, but it is Benedetta. This was $2 cheaper, which I find very funny because um, you remove the sleeve, it's a, it's a 4K, it's also got a different case than, than Shiver Baby, whereas this has the standard 4K UHD case. Shiver Baby has like the Criterion type of case. Um, again, not much to go home with of the artwork. It's the exact same style that they have. I believe the Blu-ray release has different artwork on the front cover. Obviously, it's not the uh, very provocative artwork that has been released for this movie. But, um, I don't know, worth noting nonetheless. So this is like a two hour and 10 minute long film, so I don't know when I'll get around to this, but I plan to do an anatomy of a Blu-ray on the two releases to kind of have a dive into movie releases. I wanted to do a third release, but they only had like, most of the other releases I have alternate versions of. Uh, there is like Worst Person in the World, which could be good, but there's like the Criterion release, and like Criterion is, well it's Criterion, it's like usually a better release anyway, as well as there's a uh, Drive My Car, which I got from Criterion, so I'm like, I don't really think I need to get the movie release either. I could get it as a comparison, but it's like, they might have like the exact same transfer slash restoration, but like the movie release will have like one special feature compared to the Criterion, which I think has a few more. I don't know actually. If I take a look, uh, 2K Digital Master interview with Hamaguchi, program about the making of the film, featuring behind the scenes footage. Of interviews and actors, press conference footage. So it doesn't have much, it has an essay as well. So that's the criterion for Drive My Car, which I like the artwork as well. It's, it's a good film. I haven't watched it since cinema, but I would like to rewatch it. Nevertheless, so this is a 4K UHD. I decided to get the 4K instead of just the standard Blu ray, mostly because I could. <laughs> you know, it comes with, there's no alternate artwork, but there is different disc artwork. Uh, the Blu ray being Region B locked, the 4K being all regions, obviously it does still have the um, 18 sticker, but it doesn't actually stipulate all regions. Like usually it does, it just says, oh it actually says format BD100 quad layer. Um, but yeah, it just says region B. I think it's just because all 4Ks are all regions, but I've heard that some recent Screen Factory ones are region A locked as well, which is bullshit if that is true like as it's stupid if that if that is true that's really dumb of screen factory but i think that's just a process like a some kind of fault i've way this does come with an interview with paul verhoeven and uh virginie ethera wow that's a, that's a hell of a name um, and it does come with art cards which is cool you know look it's just a bunch of nuns it's a gaggle of nuns i don't know it's got some interesting looking scenery though so i'm very interested to watch it um, again, Paul Verhoeven, I've always liked his films, there's a whole array of stuff that I could discuss about them, but, uh, yeah, and given that I did like the movie release for Shiver Baby, I'm interested to watch this, I'm curious as well as to if the special feature of the, you know, the, um, interview is on both discs, my main issue there would be, it's the kind of thing, like, it comes to the Blu-ray and the, and the 4K, it's like, but if the Blu-ray and the 4K both are the exact same thing, just one's a 4K of the film, I don't think it has Dolby Vision. Oh, it does, actually. It says it's, yeah, standard uh, 2160, 24p Dolby Vision, HDR10. Oh, okay, so it says region code ABC for the UHD and region B for the Blu-ray, so it doesn't have an ABC sticker on the back, which is nice. Like, it, it has the B for the Blu-ray, but it doesn't have anything for the... Uh, 4K, but it stipulates region code for the UHD. It's also in French with English and English SDH subtitles. I don't know what that stands for. I'm interested. I'm very interested. 
Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Adios.